Okay, so let's talk rafter terms. Um, this is a truss rafter. Truss rafters are rafters that are built in a shop or a factory and then they're shipped to the job site and then they're installed on the job site as one piece. Whereas if you make the rafters all yourself, then that is what they call a stick built roof. Okay, so let's go over the terms for this truss rafter. All right, so first here at the bottom, we have distance from the outside of the wall on this side to the outside of the wall on that side. That is called nominal. That's the nominal span, okay, nominal span. The distance from the inside of the wall to the inside of the wall, that is called the clear span, okay. So we have the nominal from outside to outside, clear from inside to inside. All right, moving up to here. The distance from the sack center of the rafter to the outer edge of the wall is called total run, okay? From the center, exact center of the rafter to the outside of the wall is the total run. Now, the total run is going to be half of the nominal span, okay? All right, over here on the right, the total distance up, that is called the total That's the total rise. That's the distance from the top of the double top plate to the top of the peak up there. See, I've already got that one identified. That's the peak. So total rise goes from the peak to the top of the double top plate. All right? Okay. Um, over here, this board that runs along here, this board right here, that is called a top cord, top cord. And this one over here is the same thing. So this one over here would also be a top cord. Okay, the, the same. All right, the one that runs across the bottom then is becomes the bottom cord, okay? So this board that runs along there, that is the bottom cord. Now, what are the boards in between called? All right, these four boards right here are called webs. Now there's two types of webs. There is a tension web and there is a compression web. Compression means to pull something apart. Compression means to push it together. So. In this case, these top two are in, those are in tension, and these bottom, these outside ones are in compression. Okay? So compression and compression, tension, tension. And what they're all called webs. All right? Now, moving on to the next thing. Wherever boards meet, they're going to put a little metal plate. Well, sometimes they're not so little. These are called gussets. Okay, what is a gusset? A gusset is a piece of metal that goes through the manufacturing process and they stamp and push those things out the bottom. So they go out the bottom they look like that. Now what happens is they'll lay these boards out the way they want them on a table and then they put these gussets on it and then they drop a, a big weight on them that weighs about a thousand pounds or about a ton maybe, two thousand pounds. But it's really heavy depending on the size of the machine I guess. Um, and it, all it does is press them down into the wood. And once they're in, they don't come out. Okay, So wherever the boards meet, they would get a gusset, okay? So even right here in this middle, that would get a gusset, all right? 
Now, this arrow right here is pointing to a, what they call the splice. Since most of these are pretty long, 20, 30 feet long, you can't find a 30 foot long board, so they have to make two 15 foot boards and they put it right in the middle, cover it with a gusset, that's called your splice, okay? Now over here, this is pointing to this area right here. That area is called the heel. And then where the rafter sits on the top plate, that is called bearing. Bearing meaning that's where the weight is being transferred. So the weight of the rafter is being transferred to this outer bearing wall at that point, so bearing. But the whole area is called the heel, okay? So those are the terms. Like I said, this one up here I didn't cover yet, but that's the peak, the very point of the, where the two rafters, the top cores come together, that's the peak. So that's the terms that go along with this truss rafter. Now, as long as I'm on rafters, let's talk about slope and pitch, and what's the difference between slope and pitch. Well, slope comes as a fraction, or a, a fraction, so it's the, <clears throat> the unit rise over the unit run, and those will be in inches, okay? That is the slope. So in this example, if I got 12 inches of run, which it's 12 inches of run, then my slope, let's say it could be a 6, a 10, it could be 8, 9, 10, 12, it could be even bigger, 14, 12 uh, slope. What that means is for every 12 inches this direction, the roof goes up this in direction 6 inches. So if this is a 6, that would be a 6, then it goes over 12, up 6, over 12, up 6, over 12, up 6. That would be slope, okay? Now down here, we have pitch. Now pitch is a ratio. It's the total rise, which is that distance over there, to the span. Um, they use the nominal span, so from the outside to the outside. So let's say the total rise was 8 and the span was uh, 40 feet. Now, these are going to be in feet. So 8 feet to 40 feet. Now, since it's a ratio, it can be reduced. So 8 times 5 is 40. So the ratio then would be 1 to 5, which means for every 5 feet, this way it goes up one foot there, five to one. So you start over here, you go five to one, five to one, and by the time you got over to the other end, you'd have your 40 feet across and then you'd be up to the peak, to the uh, total rise height of eight feet, okay? So that's the difference between slope and pitch. A lot of people out there interchange them, but they're to two totally different um, measurements, okay? So that is a truss rafter. Now, let's look at some stick-built rafters. Okay. The first one I'm going to show you is a common rafter. How can you identify a common rafter? A common rafter is going to have a bird's mouth. That's this notch right here. That's called a bird's mouth. And then it's going to, at this end, it's going to have a plumb cut, which means it's just cut at a zero on your circular saw with the slope of the roof. So this would then would be a common rafter. Now, this one's a little bit bigger. I hope you can see it in the camera. But this one is a hip rafter. It has this double cheek cut at the top. And it has a bird's mouth at the bottom. So that's how you identify a hip rafter. Now, 
in a hip valley roof, the hip and valley rafters are cut the same. So this could be a valley rafter also, because it'd be cut exactly the same. For a double cheek cut at the top and a bird's mouth at the bottom, that is a hip rafter. The next one is a valley jack. A valley jack has a plumb cut at the top where it meets the ridge board, just like the common rafter does. And at the bottom, it has a single cut, a single cheek cut, because the hip rafter is going to come up through here. It's going to nail up against the hip rafter, so it has to be at an angle. So it has a single cheek cut on here. Or we call this a beveled miter cut, because it's beveled at an angle and is mitered going the other way. So this would be a valley jack. The next one would be a hip jack. A hip jack again is going to have the single cheek cut because it also butts up to that the hip rafter on one end and then it has a bird's mouth at the other end. So that's how you identify this one. It's got a bird's mouth and a single cheek cut so that it hits the hip rafter going up like this. Okay, That is a hip jack. Alright, the next one, this one is called a cripple jack. And you'll see here that it's got a beveled miter on this end and a beveled miter at this end. Now this rafter runs from a hip rafter and a valley rafter, okay? So it runs between the two types of rafters. That's why they are cut in opposite directions, because they have to, the valley rafter will come in here and the hip rafter will come in there, okay? So that's how you identify a cripple jack. So it's got single cheek cuts on both ends, okay? Now I got one more rafter. This one, if you look at this one, it has a plumb cut on this end, plumb cut over here, and then on this end, it has a beveled miter, but the bevel is not on zero, this time it's on a different angle. So like this one was cut on at 26 and a half degrees, so this one would match a 26 and a half degree roof. So it would sit, this would be, your, your ridge board would be up here, and then your slope of your roof would be coming up underneath here, okay? This one, this rafter right here is cut for what they call a cricket or a saddle. Uh, it's that little pyramid thing behind your chimney, okay? You can also use these on um, over valleys where you have a gable end that's got to meet a roof, and these would be used to fill in the rafters up the existing roof, okay? So uh, there's no specific name for this one, but it's kind of like a... Um, It'd be like a valley jack because you have a, a plumb cut on the one end and then you have, but you, instead of running into another uh, rafter, it's going to sit on the roof. Okay, so that would be that. So we'll just call that a, like a, a saddle jack or a cricket jack, something on that. Okay, all right, so that's it for terms for the rafters. Um, so, truss rafter, all these information up here, and then of course we have our different stick built rafters over there. All right.